The card isn't working, C-L-A-R-A. This is not how I'm going home. Now fix it. Stuck at the hotel, my spouse yelled over the phone. I lost my parents in an accident when I was a college student. To pay for school, I had to work multiple part-time jobs and struggled greatly to make things better. I launched a business after taking a friend's advice. It was difficult, but I kept my attention on my work, and the business began to expand. I assist in running the company now that I am the vice president. As a lot of my friends were getting married and beginning children, I started to consider how happy I could be for myself. My spouse and I clicked immediately when we first met, and we were married in four months. However, he declared he would be a stay-at-home spouse and quit his job after the wedding. He rejected my requests for him to work at least part-time. I discovered my credit card was missing one day. It was taken by my spouse to travel with his folks. I repeatedly tried to phone him, but he never answered. He said, don't bother me while I'm spending time with my family. Something you can't do, understand. When I eventually got to him, knowing that his deeds will eventually catch up with him, I responded calmly and with a smile. I am C-L-A-R-A Rouch. As vice president of Adventure Company, I am 31 years old. I'm in a secure financial position now, but things weren't always this way. Living as a student was quite difficult for me. When I was in school, my parents were murdered by an automobile, and that tragedy completely upended my world. I had to figure out how to pay for my tuition because, even with part-time jobs and grants, it was insufficient. I was working non-stop, going to classes, and sleeping very little. My student Kyle Walker approached me one day with a concept. Let's launch a business together, C-L-A-R-A. We could be very successful if we combine your abilities with my business acumen. I chose to go for it despite the fact that it was a major task because Kyle was well-liked and respected. I was constantly concerned about how I would handle my time between all of my part-time jobs and what would happen if we failed. What happens if we don't succeed? I told Kyle, I'm too busy with work to take on something new. He gave me a kind grin, as though he well understood my worries. Then his eyes took on a determined look. Be at ease, we're going to succeed, he declared. His confident remarks reassured me, and his enthusiasm made the most difficult tasks appear doable. I accepted because I felt that I needed to make a shift in my life at that moment. And while I was still in college, we launched a business. It was difficult at first. It was difficult to get started since banks frequently denied our requests for funding. Hiring was yet another difficult task. It was challenging for our tiny business to draw in talented employees. We posted employment ads, but very few people applied, and it was challenging to identify the proper prospects. However, Kyle maintained his composure and offered a stoop counsel that strengthened our team. Gradually, our business started expanding. As we overcame these difficulties together, Kyle and I grew to be close confidence and reliable business partners. After I reached 31, I came to the conclusion that I had spent practically all of my time at work. I didn't feel bad about it. I put a lot of effort into supporting myself and my studies. And I'm proud of the business we started from the ground up. The company is doing well. And in the last seven years, both our workforce and income have significantly increased. But when I witnessed close friends getting hitched and starting kids, I began to believe that my life was only about my career. I confided in Kyle about my feelings one day following a lunch meeting. Kyle, I've been seeing friends my age getting married, and it's made me think, I replied. Kyle was taken aback by the abrupt subject. He questioned, What's this all about? I've been focused only on work since we graduated, but now I'm starting to wonder if that's okay, I said. 
Are you thinking about getting married? He inquired. He listened to me, took a moment to consider what to say, and then said, If you're unhappy with the way things are, it might be a good idea to seek change. There is more to life than job. That also holds true for marriage. Maybe it's time to make the first move if you want more out of life. His remarks caused me to reflect more thoroughly on my life and my direction. I began, for the first time, thinking about things other than work. Encouraged by Kyle's words of wisdom, I made the decision to begin dating again. I joined up for a secure dating app immediately after a buddy suggested it, and I started going on dates after work and hanging out at bars, restaurants, and movie theaters. I met Tyler M. after going on a few dates. He was good at cooking and cleaning, whereas I was always preoccupied with work and not very good at housework. He was understanding of my busy schedule and never became angry when I had to postpone a date. We had a smooth progression of our relationship and discussed marriage from the beginning. After only five months of dating, we made the decision to tie the knot. However, Tyler shocked me by telling me he was leaving his job to become a stay-at-home spouse shortly after the wedding. It stunned me. What just happened? Confused, I asked. I'll take care of all the housework from now on so you can concentrate on work, Tyler stated coolly. I was taken aback. Why would you make this decision without even talking to me? Still trying to take it all in, I asked. You're making money. So it's fine if I take care of the house, Tyler said in a casual manner. It will simplify things for you. It was unbelievable to me. Was he going to depend entirely on my salary? We weren't that wealthy, despite the fact that I was earning. You should at least get a part-time job, I suggested. But no matter how much I tried, he refused. I'm done working for a company. If you're making money, that's enough, he said. I was dumbfounded by how selfish he sounded. But as a newlywed, I didn't want to argue. To make things worse, he also started asking me to send money to his parents. Family helps each other, he said. I'm a stay-at-home husband now. So, Cialera, I'm counting on you. I wouldn't mind supporting his parents if he had an income. But putting the burden on me felt wrong. What made it harder was that his parents seemed to think I was forcing him to do all the housework. During a meal with them, his mother put down her chopsticks and said, C-L-A-R-A, you're making Tyler do all the housework. Poor him. Do you really think this is fair? Then his father added, He told us you're not good at housework, but as his wife, shouldn't you try to improve? I didn't know what Tyler had told them, but clearly, they thought I was the bad guy. That's not true. Tyler chose to be a stay-at-home husband, I protested, but Tyler whispered, Calm down, just apologize, and I'll clear things up later. Even though he said he'd explain, I was frustrated that he didn't stand up for me right then. Later, when I asked if he had fixed the misunderstanding, he always brushed it off, saying it didn't matter. I never got the chance to talk to my in-laws. I felt rejected by them and unsupported by my husband, which made me feel hopeless about our marriage. I even started thinking about divorce. Then when I went to the hospital because of stomach pain, I found out I was pregnant. I felt both surprised and happy. So I rushed home to tell Tyler. Tyler, I'm pregnant, I told him. Really? That's great, he said calmly, which confused me. There was no excitement from him. He just sat on the couch watching TV like my news didn't matter. The happiness I felt quickly turned to disappointment. His lack of interest hurt me deeply, and I went to my room in tears, wondering if the love we once had was gone. Even with a baby on the way, he didn't seem happy. 
I realized there might not be a future for us, and the thought of divorce weighed heavily on my mind. But with a baby coming, I couldn't make that choice easily. Could I raise a child alone? I hoped things might change when the baby was born. Maybe Tyler and his family would act differently. Holding on to that hope, I decided to stay in the marriage for now. As time passed, I noticed a large charge on my credit card statement. One day, I couldn't find my card in my wallet either. Had I lost it? Was it stolen or used by someone? Worried, I brought it up with Tyler. Hey! I found a big charge on my card that I don't recognize. Could it be fraud? Should I call the credit card company? I asked. To my shock, he said, I used it. It's not fraud, so don't cancel it. Apparently, after quitting his job and running out of savings, he had secretly taken my credit card and started using it without telling me. This was despite the fact that I was already giving him money for groceries and household expenses. Why did you use my card without asking? And what did you buy with so much money? I asked. It's my right to spend it on whatever I want. I just need some money for myself. He shot back. Then get a job and use your own money, I replied. But this was a conversation we had many times before. No matter how much I'd begged or got angry, he refused to work. The man I once thought would help support us was now barely cooking, mostly ordering takeout, and hardly cleaning the house at all. When I complained about the situation, he got angry. You're the one making the money. So what's the problem? I'm your husband, and I'm doing the housework as a stay-at-home husband. I have the right to at least that. He shouted, then stormed out, say he was going back to his parents' house. I was filled with anger and sadness over his actions. Aren't families supposed to support each other? I'm pregnant, but I'm starting to doubt how much he cares about our future as a family. I worked hard to build the career and income we have now. Just because we're family doesn't mean he can make big purchases without talking to me first. I took deep breaths, trying to calm down and hold back my tears and frustration. Later that night, he suddenly came back home with his parents. The door flew open, and I stood up in shock. His parents rushed in and immediately started blaming me. It's because you forced Tyler to do all the housework that he's been neglecting his duties. They accused. As a woman, you should be doing the cooking, laundry, and cleaning. Don't use work as an excuse to slack off. I was already feeling unwell from the pregnancy, and hearing this made my anger boil over. I had already decided to get a divorce, so I couldn't hold back any longer. That's not true. Don't act like you know what's going on when you don't, I shouted. You'll regret it if you keep treating me like this. They looked shocked by how cold I sounded, but I realized there was no point in arguing with them. My husband had mizzled them. And even when I explained that he wasn't working, they didn't believe me. So I decided to stay quiet. I had a strong feeling they would regret this later. But in that moment, I felt the deep sting of betrayal from the man I once thought would protect me. Then my mother-in-law pulled out some papers from her bag and slammed them onto the table. If you don't reflect on your actions, we're demanding a divorce. Sign this and be done with it, she said. I stared at the papers, shocked. I never thought they would bring this to me, especially since I had been planning to ask for a divorce myself. Thinking this might turn into a court battle, I grabbed the pen. My hand was trembling so much that it was hard to hold it. But I forced myself to sign the papers. There it's done, I said, my voice cold. My husband and his parents left after that. But I suddenly remembered I forgot to ask for my credit card back. A deep sense of despair washed over me. Then, out of nowhere, a sharp pain shot through my abdomen. Far worse than anything I'd ever felt. 
I collapsed onto the floor. My breathing quickened and sweat poured from my body. My vision blurred, and the unbearable pain left me numb. I tried to say, What's happening? But the words barely left my lips. With each breath, the pain grew worse, and my body felt out of control. I struggled to pull myself across the floor, desperately trying to reach my phone. My fingers shook as I clawed at the floor, moving forward inch by inch with all the strength I had left. The sharp pain threatened to make me pass out. Finally, I managed to make the call and with a shaky voice explained the situation. Help! I'm in severe pain and I'm pregnant. I gave them my address and hung up. The pain didn't stop and my vision got blurrier. I collapsed on the floor, waiting for the ambulance. Please protect my baby, I prayed, holding on to the agony. I kept telling myself I had to stay strong for my child. I was rushed to the hospital, where I faced the risk of premature labor. The doctor said it was due to stress and overwork, and I was admitted right away. Fear for my baby's safety overwhelmed me and I must have passed out. After being in a coma for six days, I finally woke up in the hospital room. The pain had eased, and my body felt more relaxed. I immediately checked my belly and felt relief that my baby was still there. I took a deep breath, comforted by the quiet room and the soft light coming through the window. As my memories came back, I remembered the terrible pain the ambulance ride, and the fear of losing consciousness. I was grateful to be safe and alive, but then my thoughts turned to my husband. I needed to contact him. I grabbed my phone and called him, but he didn't pick up. I had given his contact information to the paramedics when I was brought to the hospital, but I hadn't heard from him. I kept trying, and on the fifth call, he finally answered. His voice sounded strange, and the connection was bad. What do you want at this hour? He asked. I was rushed to the hospital for signs of premature labor. It happened after you and your parents left, I said, asking him to bring some things I needed. His response shocked me. That sounds tough, but I'm overseas right now, so I can't help. Overseas? I asked, stunned. I'm on vacation in Germany, spending time with my parents. Don't bother me. I'm fulfilling my filial duty, something you can't handle, he replied. I was speechless. How could an unemployed man afford an overseas trip? He kept talking about his duty to his parents, so I guessed he must have had some other source of money. With my voice shaking, I simply said, got it, and hung up. Afterward, I went to the hospital gift shop, bought some stationery and an envelope, and made a phone call to someone. The next day, my husband called in a panic, saying, the card's not working. I can't get home like this. Fix it right now, he demanded. I canceled the card, I replied calmly, though inside, I was boiling with anger. What? I can't pay for anything. What are you going to do about it? He asked, sounding desperate. That's your problem, I answered firmly. This isn't just my problem. I'm still your husband, he shot back. I couldn't help but laugh. What's so funny? He asked, clearly confused. Our marriage is almost over. The divorce process is already underway, I said. His tone suddenly became tearful. Please just let me use the card temporarily so I can get home. I'm begging you. He pleaded. But I felt nothing. Figure it out on your own. You're no longer my concern. I responded coldly and hung up. Six days later, my friend and the company president, Kyle, came to visit me. Don't worry about work. Just focus on resting for now he said. 
I smiled and replied, It's the first time I've done absolutely nothing like this. Just then, the hospital room door burst open. My ex-husband and his parents, fresh from their overseas trip, stormed in. The moment he saw me, my ex-husband yelled, What have you done? I had to borrow money from a friend just to get back home. His mother screamed, This is unbelievable. How could you put us through this? His father joined in, shouting, Our son's carefully planned trip was completely ruined. Their fury exploded in front of Kyle and some people passing by, but I remained calm. He paid for the trip with my credit card without my knowledge, I said. The mood in the room changed instantly. My in-laws exchanged shocked and confused looks, as if they'd just been struck by lightning. I continued, Right after we got married, he announced he would be a stay-at-home husband and quit his job, but he's barely been helping with the housework. The room went silent, and I could see the distress on my in-laws' faces. What? Tyler isn't working. That can't be true. He told us he had a job. My mother-in-law stammered, her voice shaky and filled with worry. My father-in-law looked at me, his face showing a mix of shock and disappointment. The truth is, he's been unemployed the whole time, and I've been the one supporting the household, I explained. Hearing this, my in-laws turned to my ex-husband with disbelief in their eyes. They looked betrayed and deeply disappointed. My mother-in-law pressed her lips tightly together while my father-in-law clenched his fists in anger. My ex-husband couldn't meet their gaze, staring at the floor under their piercing looks. At that moment, Kyle spoke up. Mr. and Mrs. Maine, I have something important to discuss with you. I'm the CEO of the company where TLARA works, Kyle began. Through our conversations, I've learned that Tyler has been unemployed and CLARA has been the one supporting the household financially. As Kyle said this, my in-laws' faces showed shock and disbelief. He calmly handed them his business card and showed them the company's website. They took the card, their hands trembling as they looked at it. The truth was undeniable now and their expressions turned to astonishment and confusion. Our company is also a key client for a major project at Mr. Main's workplace, Kyle continued. But we cannot continue working with unreliable partners. This can't be happening. What will happen to the project, Tyler? How are you going to explain this? My father-in-law stammered, barely able to speak. He looked crushed. My mother-in-law, buried her head in her hands, pale, and in disbelief. How did it come to this? She murmured. Tyler, now desperate, grabbed my hand tightly. C-L-A-R-A, -A, please help me. I want to make things right, he pleaded, his eyes filled with fear and desperation. His hand trembled, but given how he had ignored me and done as he pleased in the past, I wasn't surprised to see him begging now. It's too late. I can't forgive what you've done. And this is the end. I said firmly, pushing his hand away. Please help me, he begged, dropping to his knees on the floor. At that moment, Kyle presented some important documents. Can you still say the same thing after seeing this? He asked. The papers revealed an investigation Kyle had quietly conducted into Tyler's actions. They showed how Tyler had lied about sending money to his parents and had been recklessly spending my income. I can't tolerate anyone hurting a valuable business partner, Kyle said, his voice calm but filled with resolve. I've already spoken with our lawyer. You should prepare to compensate. Kyle delivered this news with a polite but firm smile, leaving my ex-husband and his parents in shock. As I lay in my hospital bed, 
I felt an overwhelming sense of gratitude and relief for everything Kyle had done for me. Since that day, the stress has lifted. I recovered from the threat of premature labor and eventually gave birth to a healthy baby. My heart is filled with both joy from the birth and the exhaustion of childbirth. Kyle and my colleagues even visited to celebrate, and since being discharged, I've been enjoying peaceful and fulfilling days. I moved into a new apartment that Kyle had arranged for me. Thanks to his thoughtful care, we chose a place where my ex-husband and in-laws would never be able to find us, ensuring our privacy and safety. The new apartment is in a quiet area away from the busy city, surrounded by greenery and peaceful silence. It's the perfect place to enjoy nature, whether for a walk or just to relax. Here, my baby and I are starting a new chapter in our lives. With this fresh start, I feel both excited and nervous, but having supportive people around me has made things much easier. A few weeks have passed since I gave birth, and I'm currently on maternity leave, enjoying peaceful time with my baby. Kyle visits us regularly, bringing essentials and offering words of encouragement. One day, he came by again with new supplies. As he saw us, he asked, C-L-A-R-A, how are you feeling? The baby looks healthy, and that's what matters most. Thank you, Kyle. We've made it through because of your support, I replied, grateful. After inviting him inside, I gently laid the baby in the crib and made him a cup of coffee. Looking slightly serious, Kyle said, I need to talk to you about your ex-husband and his parents. Is something wrong? Kyle explained that he had been keeping an eye on them to make sure we were safe. They sold their house to pay the compensation and are now living in a rundown apartment. Your ex-father-in-law lost his job, and all four of them are working non-stop. He said, placing some papers on the table. He continued by informing me that my ex-husband is currently working long hours at a construction site. His habit of being lazy when it comes to helping out around the house is getting him into trouble at work, where he gets reprimanded frequently. He's having a hard time adjusting to his new work. My ex-mother-in-law, meantime, works two jobs. During the day, she works as a cashier, and at night, she works on a sandwich production line. She doesn't take breaks from her back problems, but she lacks the resources to receive help. A new employment has been difficult for my ex-father-in-law to find because of his age and inexperience. These days, he works as a janitor at night and a cashier during the day. I felt a range of emotions while I listened, but above all, I understood that their troubles sprang from their own decisions. I had a brief sympathetic moment, but it passed soon. Well, that's the consequence of them betraying us, I answered, maintaining my composure. With a nod, Kyle stated, you're correct. You're at last free. From now on, let's prioritize your happiness and the health of the infant. I wholeheartedly concurred with Kyle, and I was more certain than ever that my child and I would be the center of my future. I felt prepared for a new beginning since I had put the hardships and suffering of the past behind me. Later, with the assistance of my attorney, I made demands that my ex-husband and in-laws restore the savings they had taken out without my consent and pay alimony. They said they couldn't afford it, but I stopped being terrified for my future and the future of my child. I took a stance and turned to face them. I'm going to stop thinking about Marmor. I smiled and said, I'll have a wonderful life with my child from now on. Kyle answered, That's the wise decision. You deserve all the happiness that is coming your way since you are such a strong person. His words of support filled me with even more self-assurance. Right now, my main focus is on my child 
and finding happiness together. This new beginning is a significant advancement for both of us.